Today I'm setting a lofty goal for myself, maybe the loftiest goal of them all. Today, I'm building a loft bed on four eyes. So one of my favorite parts about building custom furniture is that I constantly get to build things that I usually wouldn't make for myself. Sure, the YouTube and content side of the business allows for a lot of freedom in the projects that we build, but sometimes I get a commission for a piece that I would never build on my own, like a Danish modern inspired bed. So while I continue to mill these boards, and before we get too far into it, I want to tell you about something that Chris and I have been working on for a while now, and we're really excited to share with everyone. And that is, we're finally going to be releasing long form video plans. I'll put a link to it in the description, but our first one is going to be released on July 7th, and the second one will be out later in the month. We're running a pre-sale discount price until the 7th for both sets of plans, so go check out the website if you're interested. Okay, so I started this build with the five main supports for the bed, four of which would receive tapers and some decorative details, and the fifth was basically a fancy 2x4. So with everything rough cut and milled flat, I could start by cutting them to length, and as you'll see here, a big heavy bandsaw works really well as a stop for long parts. cut each one to final width, and since I had already rough cut the taper, I was really only cutting the top section of each leg. With the legs cut to final length and width, the last step was to cut the tapers, which required a large sled with some simple hold downs to keep everything secure. So with the legs to finish size, I then went to work on the sides of the bed, and I started with the headboard and footboard, which were identical. And these consisted of the top and bottom rails, and two vertical spacers at each end, which I rough cut the curves into before gluing everything up. Once the glue had dried, I could finish off shaping the curves with a template and a router, then cut them to final length. Hopefully watching all of that didn't make your head bored. And with those done, I could get started on the sides. And I started with the back one because, well, because it was easier. It was a similar process to the headboard and footboard, except it only received one spacer in the middle, and then was dominoed and glued to the legs, which received a roundover on the two outside edges, as well as a tapered roundover on the front inside edge before the glue up. At this point, it was finally time to start the front side of the bed, and as you can see, it had a bit more going on. In my head, I like to save the more intricate sections of a build until the end, save the best especially in a piece like this one that has repetitive parts. This way, I'm able to work out any issues and get a little practice before doing the tricky stuff. So 
So with the front rails cut to length and dry fit together, I could measure out where the middle leg would be going so I could cut the dado joint. I dialed everything in with some scrap, and once I was happy with the fit, I could cut the actual joint on my table saw. This was a slow process, taking eighth inch cuts to clear the whole joint, and I suppose if I had needed to do a bunch of these, I would have switched to my dado stack, but for just the one, I decided the blade change time versus doing it this way was negligible. The last thing to do for the front side of the bed was build the ladder, which was quite a process in itself, and I started with two long pieces for the verticals, a bunch of short pieces for the rungs, and a template for template things. I first marked the spacing of my rungs on the verticals, then used the template to mark out the curves for each rung. And from here I could cut in my dominoes while the piece still had a long flat reference edge. So once the dominoes were cut in, I then went to the bandsaw and rough cut the curves into the verticals. And then I could cut the rungs to final length and width. I guess I forgot to get footage of cutting the mortises into the rungs, but I did that, then glued everything together. With the ladder glued up, it was time to shape everything with a router and template, so I first shaped all the curves on the top side with a handheld router and template bit, then finished them on the router table to flush trim the bottom half. Finally, I could round over all the edges so all future hands and feet would be safe from sharp edges. With that done, I could glue the ladder between the two legs, then trim the bottom of the ladder to match the length of the legs. So at this point, I could finally glue up the entire front side assembly, which I did in two sections. First, I did the left side leg to the front rails, and once that was dry, I glued on the entire ladder assembly and the right side legs. All right, while we let that glue dry, let's talk about this month's feature viewer project, which comes from Inez Mayus. Inez made this really clever plywood bike rack, which she's calling the Plex Cargo Rack. She needed a way to carry things on her bike during her design internship in Belgium, so she came up with this design and utilized a CNC router to help get it done. If you want to see more pictures and read more about this piece, go check out our website, which we'll link to in the description. We're going to be featuring a new project each month, and we're happy to be using Squarespace to help us build the website. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now, and honestly, it's one of the best choices we made when starting our businesses. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business, things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with the mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like making a Danish modern inspired loft bed or a cool bike rack. So if you're thinking about starting a website or even if you already have one, 
go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, thanks Squarespace. And if you wanna have one of your projects featured as well, check out the link in the description for more details. The last thing to do before final assembly was to cut in the curves onto the front and back sections. And I did this just like I did on the headboard and footboard, though for the thicker leg parts, I needed to do a bit of jigsawing as well. Finally, I was ready to put the bed together and I used these domino connectors, which will allow the bed to be disassembled and reassembled easily. And they hold everything together really well. fully assembled, I could make and install some rails and slats to hold the mattress, and I used dominoes to hold these in place. that I just needed to disassemble everything, sand and add some finish and this one was pretty much done. There it is, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out our new video plans. We've been working really hard on them and we're really proud with how they're coming together. So I'll put a link to that in the description. And of course, until next time, if you ever wanna make a loft bed for someone and you wanna be polite, it might be a good idea to ask if they're afraid of height.